Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's video is based on the uh, problem sent to me by one of my subscribers from India and here is a problem in an electron micrograph of human chromosome spread a thick fiber with a length of about 900 nanometers and apparent diameter of 30 nanometers expected for the solenoid structure of condensed D DNA is observed. Assuming that there is uh, one helical turn of solenoid per 30 nanometers along the fiber and that the DNA content of each human nucleosome plus uh, the linker DNA connecting it to the adjusting nucleosome is about 200 base pairs, the length of the double-stranded DNA in the fiber would be, and you have to choose the correct answer, as usual, I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve this problem on your own first, and when you would be ready, you can run video again, and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. The third time I am solving uh, this type of problems uh, from this subscriber, and every time uh, the problem contains uh, mistakes in the answers. And every time I am saying go and demand extra credit. Here we have... Uh, correct answer among, among these answers, but actually I have to tell you right away that not information is given to solve this problem. So one essential part is missing here, so in order to solve this problem, uh, assuming that this problem is given not to be solved in the class, but uh, for example in genetics many exam questions are given in order to be solved at home. So, uh, in this case, uh, you can solve this problem uh, by doing some research. So, uh, first of all, what is a micrograph of chromosome spread? And here is example. So, we have uh, chromatin fibers. I hope you would be able to see it. Uh, here, we have uh, nucleosomes in relaxed form and around uh, each uh, nucleosome uh, that consists of eight proteins who watch my previous couple videos you would know that these proteins we call homodimers so uh, homodimer uh, means uh, one protein would aggregate with itself and then actually instead of uh, eight proteins here we have only four but uh, those four would aggregate with themselves and would make uh, octamer protein so basically consists of eight proteins but only four of them would be different but here on this micrograph uh, we would see different structure this uh, relaxed form of the dna now in more compact form Nucleosomes uh, here on the right is about 10 nanometers in diameter and um, DNA would wind almost twice around this nucleosome but here on this picture uh, these nucleosomes would uh, arrange in spiral form like a spring and diameter here would be 30 nanometers so we call this 30 nanometers chromatin fibers and now let me show you some other pictures by the way uh, it is very hard to find pictures on the internet that would describe uh, exactly what going on almost every picture that I saw today contains mistakes and I cannot uh, also make a picture because it is very hard so I just choose two uh, pictures and I also want to tell you not uh, how to solve this problem but also to understand what problems with this picture so you would have deeper understanding. So why this problem cannot be solved? Because uh, here we are not told how many nucleosomes we have per one ring, per one turn uh, of this structure. So this problem cannot be solved. But uh, if you would do research you would find that in one such 
uh, term of this um, structure, we would have six nuclear zones. So this information is missing in this problem. And now we can solve this problem very easily. But before I will tell you uh, all the numbers, it's so easy that we even don't have to do any calculations. Or we can do our calculations in our mind. So uh, what's wrong with this picture and why I did choose this picture? First of all, uh, it is very loose, as you see uh, on this picture, uh, DNA and uh, nuclear zones are organized in much more compact structure. But this structure uh, actually shows uh, very uh, visually how all the uh, proteins and DNA arranged. So I like this picture, but what's wrong with this picture is that here we have extra nuclear zones, for example, here and here. As I said, uh, and of course, uh, this one here and this one here. As I said, we only have six nuclear zones per uh, one turn. And uh, what's wrong with this picture? Uh, the wrong is that uh, we have, uh, we see here one nuclear zone, second, third, fourth, and fifth. That uh, give us wrong impression that uh, here on the back uh, we also should have two or three more nuclear zones per one turn. So uh, it have to be much uh, more compact, uh, much more small. And here from the front we probably only can see uh, three or four nuclear zones with DNA wind around them. And uh, what also this picture is missing, it missing uh, that each nuclear zone, each protein here has tails. Uh, with these arrows, uh, probably these tails is um, shown. So why DNA is wind around these proteins? It is wind because uh, on the overall uh, DNA is negatively charged. Every phosphate group per every uh, base uh, have one negative charge. And if we know that we have 100, about 150, 160 bases here, that means we have 150, 60 negative charges here. And uh, core proteins here are positively charged. So they just attract to each other. And what is uh, missing here is that each protein here has long tails that is also positively charged. And this explains why uh, this um, structure would wind and would arrange like this. Because these long tails also would interact with other nucleosomes, with other uh, negatively charged phosphate groups of the uh, DNA backbones. So uh, this uh, interaction of the uh, positive and negative charge, which is in nature electromagnetic forces, would arrange uh, DNA in this structure. And I also want to tell you that uh, what we see here on both pictures are uh, view from side and I also want to show you the view from the top. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six nucleosomes here. By the way, nucleosomes also uh, doesn't look like balls. So here we have DNA that winds twice around this nucleosomes almost mm, make two turns and also as I said what is missing on these pictures would be linker uh, proteins if uh, we have six um, nucleosomes per one turn we also would have six uh, linker 
proteins here that would uh, fix this DNA in place. So this is view from the top and also I want to tell you that uh, diameter would be 30 nanometers as I said one nucleosome is about uh, 10 nanometers so here we also have 10 nanometers and space here in between also about 10 nanometers so total diameter of uh, this chromatin would be about 30 nanometers so as you would take a look at our problem diameter is about 30 nanometers and uh, helical uh, structure making one turn the solenoid pair also 30 nanometers along the fiber on this picture it doesn't look like uh, diameter is equal to one turn but uh, on this picture it's more what we are looking for that uh, here we have about 30 nanometers 30 nanometers here 30 nanometers here and diameter also would be about 30 nanometers so now we have everything in order to solve this problem and we are told that uh, total length of this fragment uh, is about 900 nanometers that means that we would have uh, 30 such turns in each turn we have six um, nucleosomes twice DNA wind uh, around these nucleosomes uh, which is about uh, 150 bases plus 50 bases is linker DNA and uh, this um, information is given in our uh, problem it is here so what was not given that we have uh, such um, nucleosomes 6 per 1 turn so we are unable to solve it without this information so basically we have to multiply 200 by 6 and we would find that uh, one turn would contain 1200 nucleotides so 1200 per one turn and the total length is 900 nanometers we have to divide by 30 nanometers the length of uh, one turn so 30 turns we multiply by 1200 bases per one turn and the answer would be 36,000 base pairs this fragment would contain and as you see this is answer B but once again as I said uh, information is given in the problem is not enough to solve this problem because uh, also in this problem information have to be given that per one turn we have six nucleosomes so you can choose answer D this also would be correct answer or you can uh, say that you did some research and this is how you come up with this number and maybe your professor would give you uh, extra credit for uh, noticing this problem uh, with this problem and this is all for today thank you for attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have any and see you in the next video goodbye